everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the iRobot Roomba i2. I did purchase this robot vacuum cleaner myself and any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in the Roomba i2 or you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. You can see the retail box in packaging right here. Check it out, everything looks great. I really like the product photography on this. And they walk you through a couple of key tech specs on the backside. This is a Wi-Fi equipped smart robot vacuum cleaner with a free app for iOS and Android devices. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature featuring our safety information, one year warranty info, and our getting started guide. Walking us through six simple setup steps so we can start using and enjoying our Roomba. Next, we have the charging base and included power cable with the iRobot logo and branding on it in multiple places. Rubberized grip feet for it. Sensor indicator light up at the top. Simple and straightforward. And lastly, we have the Roomba i2. Let's go ahead, let's look at this in more detail. Here's the Roomba from the top. We have three different control buttons, spot cleaning mode, our power and clean button, and our return to charging base, return to home. iRobot logo front and center. Let's look at it now from the sides. So we'll just rotate it around. We have our navigational bumper with sensors inside and up at the top. That's how your Roomba sees and navigates iRobot Roomba i2 on the side. Very back has our dustbin, so we can press this to remove the dustbin. Let's look at the dustbin now. We have instructions to not wash the filter, so do not get the filter wet. It is like a paper filter, but you can rinse out the dustbin itself. And this filter does pop out if you want to change it. You can just easily pull it out to conduct your maintenance as needed. And we have this button to press to open up the dustbin so we can easily dump and empty out all the contents. And then it goes right back in, snaps in place. Now let's flip the Roomba over. So here's the back side of the Roomba i2 for my robot. We have our side cleaning brush, omnidirectional wheel charging contacts. We have our cliff sensors right here to keep it from driving off a ledge or landing. Spring-loaded drive wheels, the AeroForce cleaning system with the two brush roller design. If we need to remove, replace the brushes, you can do that right there. That just snaps in. And what makes this unique is the ability for this to move up and down as well as left and right. So it gives us nice suction, even over slightly uneven terrain. And you can see the bottom of the dustbin right here. Now, just for fun, let me show you the Roomba i3 and the Roomba i4 so you can see all of these vacuums together. Now we're looking at the bottom of all three of the Robovacs. Again, we have the i2 to my left, the i3 front and center, and the i4 to the right. Obviously, the i3 and i4 are dirtier than the i2 because the i2 hasn't even been used yet. It's brand new. But they all feature the same AeroForce cleaning system, same side cleaning brushes, position for the omnidirectional wheel charging contacts. Everything else is identical except the dustbin, but even that can be identical. We can swap the dustbin on all three of these with each other. The i2 and the i3 have the exact same dustbin. That's because our i4 is the plus version. The plus just signifies you bought the version that comes with the self-emptying base. And you guessed it, if you have a self-emptying base, you need a way to empty that base automatically. That's where the automatic dirt disposal comes in right here. But I do wanna point out, you can get the i3 plus with self-emptying base, and the i2 is compatible from Roomba's website with the self-emptying base as well. Now you would have to buy the either plus version if that's available, or you would have to make sure you get the correct dustbin to actually take advantage of having the self-emptying base. But they are interchangeable with each other. They feature the exact same AeroForce cleaning system, which leads me to believe internally they're all the same as well with their cleaning performance. So if you're shopping around and you come across the i3 or the i4 and they're slightly cheaper than the i2 or vice versa, that's gonna be the one I'm gonna steer you towards. Now it's time to set up our iRobot Roomba i2 with the iRobot Home app. It's a free app available for iOS and Android devices. Once you have it downloaded, you'll be prompted to sign in or create an account. Once you do, you'll be at this home screen where you can view your connected devices. Let's go ahead, let's add a new device. So we're gonna choose Add Robot. We're gonna select Roomba. Roomba again. 
Now we have a checklist to go through, making sure that you get your charging station properly set up. Now we need to connect our robot to Wi-Fi. So choose the network that you want. Make sure your phone's connected to that network. Then select yes, continue. Now we need to enter our network password. Go ahead, select continue. And now we're gonna work on activating the Roomba. So it depends on which version you have. We'll be following the prompts on the left hand side, holding down the home button and our spot cleaning button for two seconds. We'll hear a sound. So we just heard a sound and the light has changed. I press the button, select continue. Now it's gonna search for our Roomba i2. Now we have this prompt where it's asking us if we wanna to connect to the device. So let's connect. Just got another chime. Connection successful. Now it's working on setting up our Wi-Fi. So the robot is all set up and ready to go now. We got a chime, a prompt, and it let us know that it was all set up and that we should press the clean button. Let's go ahead, let's continue on here. We can name our Roomba. We're gonna name it Roomba i2. There we go, select continue. Now it's gonna give us some additional information here. So let's press next and we can learn more about the neat row by row cleaning, the charging station, how it avoids obstacles like stairs. So proper setup and preparation, remove tangles, cords, things like that. And there we go. We're now taken into the main device settings right here. Let's go ahead, let's look at that in more detail. Within the Roomba i2 settings, the first thing you might notice is the new job button up in the top right hand corner. We can pair this with our BravaJet since we do have the iRobot Roomba BravaJet mop and have it mop if it wants. And we can set our time limit for the Roomba i2 if we desire. I usually would just leave it on none, save it as a favorite. And now we've created a favorite we can always reference and use to clean. We have our battery status indicator right there. Here's all of our favorites right now, which is just vacuum everywhere, but that can change once our map builds out, we can populate that how we see fit. We can create a schedule right here. So you can select that, choose the time when you want it to start, which days of the week you want it to repeat. And if we want it to mop after, there's also an automation option, so it's smart enough to, uh, once you enable it, track when you leave your home and you could have it run. If you don't wanna set it at a fixed time, maybe that works better for your schedule. So you have those options here and we can set do not disturb mode to make sure that everything's paused during that time. Once it cleans, we can view our cleaning history right here, the area and lifetime statistics. Messages from the RoboVac as needed. We have additional settings here so we can learn more about our Roomba, specific product info. We can locate it. So it's gonna chime for us. I'm gonna press that. Hopefully it'll stop. All right, there we go. So we located it successfully. Cleaning preferences. So how many cleaning passes do you want? Bin full behavior, what do you want it to do? Keep cleaning when full, do not clean when full. So some nice preferences, we can reboot it, we can remove and factory reset it, maybe you're having some issues, things like that. You could do that right from within the app. They have a help section and an iRobot beta if you wanna check that out. So that's a quick look at the mobile app. Now let's go ahead and start cleaning. First up, the Roomba i2 is cleaning on carpet right here. We just initiated spot cleaning mode. So the light is now blue and it's moving around in a circular motion, just focusing on this one particular area to provide a nice and thorough clean. Pay attention to the lines on the carpet. You can get a feel for the overlap as well as the area that it's gonna cover if you wanna use spot cleaning mode. Just gently moves around freely in that circular motion, expanding the circle out. It's getting larger and larger. Then it'll shrink back in on itself. Go over everything again and then finish with the spot clean. So look at how wide we are. Now it's turning back in on itself, so we're more than halfway done. It's gonna give us a nice overlap here for our clean. This is a nice feature to have if maybe there's just a certain area in your house that's dirty, you spilled something, things like that, you can just place the Roomba right there. Press the spot cleaning button on the vacuum itself. It's the top right hand button on the unit. 
And here we go. So it just finished. And it's done, it's that simple. Now we have the Roomba with our regular cleaning mode, giving us that logical row by row navigation. So watch as it works its way back and forth here on the carpet. You can get a feel too for the cleaning lines it's gonna leave. But it goes row by row with a slight overlap, giving you that nice consistent clean every time because the Roomba actually knows where it's at. So I'm a big fan of the row by row navigation due to the consistencies in the cleaning. You may notice too, no issues at all for this Roomba navigating on the carpet. It's doing a great job. So here's the Roomba i2 approaching the top of the steps right there. You can see the cliff sensors activated and they prohibit it from going any further and falling down the landing. Now we have the Roomba i2 on an area rug as well as transitioning between a hard floor and surface and the rug. So you can get a feel for how it's able to navigate around different obstacles around your house. It's able to go up and down thresholds, change surfaces from carpets to hard floors or hard floors to rugs. It's not having any trouble driving on or off of the area rug. So the Roomba i2 will become your best friend in the kitchen. It moves very effortlessly over hard floors and surfaces and does a great job picking up crumbs, food particles, navigating around the baseboards and cabinets. Don't forget when your Roomba's finished cleaning, it'll find its way home. So currently we press the home button and it's moving around trying to find its way home. Here we go. Looks like it's locked into the home base now. It's gonna move around, adjust as needed. It's lining up its approach right now. Here we go. It's gonna work on driving up on the home base to charge. So there we go, it found its way home. And you can see, this is why it's important to put it up against a baseboard, things like that to make sure that the charging base doesn't slide around at all and you get that good contact initially. So we just finished our first clean. Let's go ahead and look at the results. We're gonna flip the Roomba over so you can see the main cleaning brushes right here and our side cleaning brush. Everything looks great. We have a couple little, you know, carpet fiber threads, things like that, that may get a little bit stuck in there, but much better than the typical design for Robovax on the market iRobot with their Roombas definitely has a superior brush roller system, in my opinion. Side cleaning brush, they're all about the same. This one didn't really get many tangles right here, but if you have a lot of like long hair around your house, threads, things like that, eventually these start to collect them, so you'll have to clean or cut it away. Our dustbin is really full, I can tell. So let's pop that out now. Oh, gross, look at that. And then we gotta empty it. So let's gently empty it. Look at all that air. We'll empty it in here. Can we dump it all out? So if you can't tell, I got a dog. So we have a lot of pet hair. And then we're emptying it. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look at this. That's amazing. Tons of really fine dirt and dust. Maybe I can show you the inside. So you can see some still in there and at the bottom if I shut this. Check that out. So we have some really fine dirt and dust. And then we'll look at the contents right here in our dish. Tons of pet and human hair. Got some food crumbs, grass clippings. So it does a really good job if you're wondering, should I get a vacuum like this for pet hair? The answer is yes. And then really fine dirt and dust particles as well. Crumbs, some larger items here. It's gonna be able to pick it all up for you. Now it's time to have some fun with the Roomba i2. We're gonna be putting it through a series of tests. So first up, we're calling this the Cheerios test. So 
So after just one pass, here are the results. We have about eight Cheerios left on the rug, all in this area. I would say they're a casualty of the side cleaning brush, kind of spinning them out of the way and it only made one pass so it didn't backtrack over anything. Now we've embedded 10 grams of sand into the rug. Let's see how it performs. It was able to pick back up seven out of the 10 grams of sand. Now this is more of a torture test for the Roomba i2, but spread all throughout the rug is a bunch of seven inch or so hair that will see how good of a job it does vacuuming up as well as how tangled the brush roller gets. Let's begin. All right, you can see we've encountered an issue. We have the red light on, let's go investigate. So check this out. We have our side cleaning brush got stuck right here. And then we have some hair coming out of the main cleaning brush, but I don't believe that that is necessarily uh, the cause of this air. We're gonna leave that stuff in there and we'll find out. All right, we got the red light again, even on spot clean. Let's go investigate. All right, so there's the issue right here, the side cleaning brush. Oh, that's really, really, really tangled in there. It's not the main brush rollers as you would expect. It's actually the side cleaning brush that's getting tangled. This is doing a phenomenal job, not having the hairs wrap around it or anything like that. As you'd expect, regardless of the make or model though, in a test this brutal, you can expect yours to also get hairs tangled around here. But typically, yours would look like this after maybe, you know, a month of use just with stuff around your house, not this huge clump here. But this is what's really impressive with this test is the fact that this isn't getting tangled at all. So what's interesting in all this is when you look inside the dustbin, we do have some of that long hair in here, but nowhere near the amount of hair we would get if we vacuumed around our house, picking up like our pet hair. So I thought it was interesting that most of the hair, at least in this test, coming from the rug that's being picked up by the Roomba is getting stuck in that side cleaning brush as opposed to being sucked in and vacuumed away. So we tried something new with this test, and I'm just not sure you can fully understand the brutality of this hair on this rug. It's just a really tough combination. You can see as we move our hand freely here, I mean, check that out, a lot of it's staying in place. It's almost like it has like gripping power with this rug. So look at that, it takes a couple of passes to even scoot a lot of it away off the carpet with my hand. So just keep that in mind when you're seeing this. This is just more of a torture test for a Robovac to see what it's even capable of. It's okay, little buddy. No big deal. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Now let me share with you my final thoughts in regards to the Roomba i2. I felt like we put it through the ringer and it did a good job considering the price point and value of this Roomba. This is one of their most affordable entry level Robovacs, still giving you the Aeroforce cleaning system, which I really like. That can be found on the i3, the i4, the i6, the i7, the j7. That is a fantastic system to have at a very, very competitive price point on this unit. I thought for sure when I was reviewing this, this was gonna be just like the i3 and the i4 regards to its smarts and capabilities, but we do not have mapping capabilities with this particular Roomba, at least at the time of this review. Now, the i3 and the i4 also never had mapping abilities, but they have since added that after the fact. So I guess maybe you could always hold out hope that that feature may come to this unit in the future, but I wouldn't count on it. If that's something you want with the room by room cleaning, you're gonna wanna go ahead and check out the i3 or the i4, just get whatever one's cheaper. This is very and eerily similar in all other regards and aspects. I did find one thing after using it, and that is the fact that the side cleaning brush on this unit has a screw to fasten it in place. That is not the case 
on some of the other iRobot Roomba models. So if you're looking for one of the most affordable Roombas today on the market, it's usually gonna be the 692 or the 694, but now you have the choice of the i2 and you pick up that superior cleaning system for around the same price as those other models. So in my opinion, this is the way to go, especially because you have some expansion capabilities in the future. This is compatible with the Roomba self emptying base, which I think is really cool. Now I would argue due to the cost of that base, purchasing it separately, it just makes more sense to go ahead and get the i3 or the i4 plus, but that is something to consider in the future. Unlike the 692 or the 694, we do have the ability to add that at a later date if we so choose.